We've got a couple of brews that you don't know what to do with. What to mix with what? What to put in where? There's no need to fret because there's someone here to help you. He's not just a man, he's an idiot too. The cocktail idiot. Yes, it's the cocktail idiot. It's cocktail time with your host, me, Johnty, the cocktail idiot, and... Georgie, the camera lady. Perfection. How pleased we are to be back in this cold shed <laughs> on a March evening to make you a wonderful French martini. Yeah, we're going, we're going French today, George. Very French. Mm. Well, I'm not sure it's French, but right. I love the drink. What, the French martini? Yeah. I thought you meant you loved the French. No, sorry, I meant I love the drink. Uh, I'm terrible at French. <laughs> Je m'appelle Gentil. I do have quite a French name. Gentil mm -hmm. le cocktail le idioso. You just went Spanish, I feel so. Si, si, senor. Right, okay, ready? You need three ingredients for this one, and they are some vodka, then you're going to need some chambon, and some pineapple juice. <laughs> Quality goodness. And that's it. Ready to roll? Are yes. you ready to roll? Yes. Am I ready to roll? I hope so. <laughs> I always am. Uh, off we go. So, you're going to start with your body vodka. And you're going to put in 50 ml, so a double shot, straight into your tinny. Tinny tin tin. Oh. I think I need to top it up. <laughs> there you go. You get frowned at when a cocktail connoisseur ignores that, and then I'm like, oh, I've been short changed. Oh, because you don't get all the, all you the don't get enough in juice mouth. in your drink. Yeah, definitely. Right, well, hopefully there's enough vodka in there for you now. Thank you. Cool. Right, next, 15 ml of your Chambord. Oh yeah, in that goes. Wonderful stuff. And then you're going to finish off with your pineapple juice. And that, we are going to do 35 ml. like that. So the great thing about this drink is that you can change all the ratios. So depending what your palate likes, you can uh, mix around and maybe a bit sweeter with more pineapple juice, or maybe you like it more alcoholic, in which case obviously put more vodka in. But whatever you take, whatever you take your fancy, whatever takes your sure fancy, fancy, is the drink for you, obviously. But I'm doing that. That's what I'm doing, and that's what we're gonna shake up. So, get your ass with your scoop. Fill up your shaker. Hey! Nailed it. And then, my favourite part. And we smile and shake. Right, you want to give that one a really good shake because our pineapple juice, hopefully, is going to give it a bit of froth. That's the plan, anyway. Not, not many of my plans normally come together, so we'll see. Okay, going to serve it in my favourite glass. Oh my goodness. Traditionally served in the Jesse, old, uh, it's served a in a V glass. And our channel has hardly got much showing of the martini glass and then the drink with the French martini name in it, you still serve it in that. Coop glass. Mm-hmm. One of these is... Yes! But it's dirty. Oh, God. Listen. You need to stop drinking. <laughs> Can I pour it in here, then? Yes. Get rant over. All we gotta do now is a little bit of garnish. And I'm gonna go for the classic raspberries. It's nice to have raspberries. You know what they say? No. 
through the crowd. Right. Unless it's a raspberry tree. And then it's glorious. So we're going to pop it on there. And there we go. We have one very attractive looking cocktail, not me. Who's <laughs> still laughing at me? Sorry. French martini. It's history time! Woo! Yes, and I'm quite excited about this one because it's a educational is history. It educational? As educational as I, I lie, it's not educational. But it's be five minutes, yeah, five minutes of your life of mild interest. Excellent. And then you can move on and forget about it. But the uh, the French martini started life <clears throat> in the Big Apple of New York City, if that is the right apple and city. I can confirm I thought it was. There yeah. we go. George's yeah. confirmation means it's probably not, but we move on. <laughs> so although we can't say exactly who, um, who invented the drink, it did start life in the restaurants which are owned by a uh, restaurateur called Keith McNally. Now Keith McNally um, was a pretty big restauranter in the 80s and 90s. And uh, the New York Times even described him as the restauranteur who invented, invented, invented downtown. What, the whole area? Hmm, apparently. Oh. Apparently he's a, he's a big deal. Oh. But much like the French martini, not being French, he was not American. He was British. <laughs> and he was born. That came out very posh. Yeah, it did. He was British. <laughs> <laughs> he was born in Bethnal, Bethnal Green in London. And he, uh, he moved to New York in 1975. And that's when he started opening these French-inspired restaurants. And now the French martini most likely appeared on some of the uh, in the men some of the menus in these restaurants. But it was in 1997 when he opened probably his most famous one, the re the uh, the biggest hipster joint in town, the Balthazar. And it was in this restaurant that the French martini was a trademark cocktail, and where it really started to take off because it all the cool kids went down there. <laughs> the cool kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they all had the French martini, and they went, "Wow, I'm cool." Okay, these people are over the age of 21 though, right? So kids is quite a, quite a stretch. Yeah, okay. Well, there we go. Anyway, it wasn't long. In fact, it was the same year that it moved across the Atlantic as well and uh, went on the menu at another new joint called the Met Bar, which was the, uh, the celebrity hangout of the 90s and the, and the noughties in England. Ooh. So all the big, big celeb names like Britney Spears. <laughs> The well-known British Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> British, British. Let's go with Kate Moss. Spice Girls. Or Spice Girls. There we go. That shows okay. my, uh, my, what are they, girl band knowledge. knowledge. There we go. <laughs> Moving on. So, <laughs> um, so the name, the French Martini, uh, came in two parts. The French is from the Chambord that's in it, which is a French liqueur. And the name, obviously, anything in the 80s put in a martini glass, <laughs> not a coupe glass, was called a martini, which sort of poo-pooed the original martini. But some genius came up with, well, French, martini glass, the French martini. I like to say it's not very inventive, but I like the name, so I'm, I'm not going to go Precisely. on Precisely. And that is the history of this glorious drink sitting in front of me, which means it's the end of this gloriously long and tedious time in your life. Don't be mean, I mildly enjoyed this one. Oh, well there we go, that's praise indeed. And with that praise, I'm gonna ask you to do the old like, comment, and subscribe, and say thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to go on the Instagram and post your pickies, and we will see you next time. Yes, it's the cocktail pity.